Hey guys, it's Steve Spurlock with Few Country Leather. Good to see everybody. Uh, it's Friday here. Uh, I don't know what day you're watching this, but it's Friday today and uh, Few Country Friday. Uh, a few months ago, we were doing Few Country Friday videos and I and, uh, just want to kind of bring that back. These are for YouTube. Uh, I may end up putting uh, some of these on Facebook if they're a little bit shorter, uh, but this is going to be a little bit longer video today because I'm going to be making a belt and uh, we uh, get talking about making belts and and uh, if you uh, watched uh, any or all of the uh, 10 segment uh, rifle sling video, I talked about making belts a little bit in that. And and um, and I appreciate you if you just uh, hit like and share on this one and uh, and subscribe, sub subscribe to the channel. And uh, so uh, we, we appreciate the audience. We appreciate folks coming by. And uh, we just want to be a help, just trying to give out some uh, uh, good solid advice about making making belts and, and leather craft and I'm no expert by any means and uh, there's uh, usually you do something one way it's just like in in in, uh, in carpentry if you do it one way there's uh, three or four other guys out there doing it their own way and doing it a little bit different sometimes it's better sometimes it's harder uh, just <laughs> you know just uh, but uh, you know, let me challenge you if you're uh, interested in leather craft uh, just uh, take it and make it your own and uh, and just enjoy it and that's what I've done with mine and and uh and it just turned out to uh it's been really good to me and the lord's blessed it um and we've been able to 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 do quite a few things with it from wallets and bags to you know and belts and rifle slings if you saw those videos and and and, and we've got a great customer base we love our customers and and uh, they call us and talk to us about a lot of different things so uh just uh just hit like and sh and, and subscribe and uh share the video and uh we appreciate you guys tuning in and and uh, we're going to start making a belt today. Uh, this is uh, bridal leather. It's a uh, uh, Havana Brown bridal leather. I've already stripped it out. It's an uh, uh, inch and a half uh, in width. And uh, it's uh, right off the height of leather. Uh, you, I mean, it's uneven on both ends. And, and uh, so we, we're going to uh, dress it up and make it a, make it a, a belt. I'm going to make a 36 inch uh, length belt. I've already been making belts this morning. So... Uh, that's kind of the next in the process and uh, is 36. I keep several on hand. Uh, we run the website at uh, fewcountryleather.com and, and uh, so I try to keep things on hand uh, pretty regular and, and that way I can, uh, that helps with shipping. And, uh, you know, obviously if you've already got it made, uh, you can just bag it up and ship it out and, and uh, that helps out quite a bit. So, but uh, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of tools. First, I'm going to talk about the leather. It's Cayenne leather. Uh, it's uh, tanned in Mexico. I think for the most part, I think North American uh, cattle uh, hides are sent down to Mexico and they tan them and then they send the leather uh, back up here. It may, probably goes out around the world too, but uh, Weaver Leather Supply is a distributor. I think this actual, this actual uh, hide of leather came from uh, American Leather Direct in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And uh, we really enjoy working with them. I've worked with them since since I got started in Leathercraft 2018. And uh, so uh, uh, we want to give them a shout out. They've been really good to us. And, and uh, we we bought uh, uh, just, I mean, just oodles and oodles of hides of leather from them. And, and uh, But we get most of our stuff comes already. Uh, uh, if I'm making belts, usually what I'll do is uh, now with uh, the website and as my business has grown, uh, I'll let them go ahead and strap them out and, uh, and I can pay just a little bit extra to have them go ahead and knock them down to inch and a half or inch and a quarter, or whatever I'm working on. And, uh, sometimes I'll do that. And, uh, and I have been doing that since we've been kind of crazy busy through Christmas and that kind of thing. Uh, these particular ones, uh, I can't remember if I cut them or not. Uh, they've already, but we, we do them. I do them here. I'm going to show you here in a little while about the strap cutter. And since I'm mentioning it, I'll go ahead and get it and, and talk about it. Uh, mine's, this particular one's a craft tool. And uh, that came from, uh, pretty sure this came from Tandy Leather. I'm pretty positive that came from Tandy Leather. And uh, so that's a strap cutter. That's what that looks like. It's got, uh, it's got the measurements on the side here. And uh, both in millimeters and in inches. I've already got it set. Uh, for five eighths of an inch for the loop that we'll put on the end of this belt. Uh, and you can go out to four inches. I make my weight belts with this. I make my mining belts with this. Uh, make all my uh, straps and stuff. Use this one right here. Uh, this literally has cut 
hundreds and hundreds of belt straps since I've been in business. And uh, we just change out the, it's got a little razor blade in here and uh, and it's easy to change out with a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver and uh, just take it out. Safety first though, just watch yourself. The, uh, the punches I'm using today are, uh, and these are the only ones I use. Uh, these are uh, Weaver Leather uh, Master Tools. And uh, uh, these, uh, these are specifically inch and a half set. So uh, I don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, trying to cut it with my knife or, or any of that kind of stuff. I just use my, my mallet here and, and, uh, and, and drive it. Looks like I was doing the drive punch in those other, in those other videos before. But, uh, but this knocks off the end of the belt. This is a round punch and same thing here. This is an English point uh, uh, for the front end of the belt. It's kind of got a, a V shape. Let me put it down here to where you can see it good. And so that's, that'll be the front of the belt. This will be what goes through the belt buckle and the adjustment holes are right behind this. And so that's what comes around your body and goes through the buckle. And uh, just that little triangle is called an English point. And I have this tool. It's the same. It's a it's a Weaver Leather Supply Master Tool, and it's a it's a, a what they call a bag punch or a slot punch. And uh, this is a one inch size, and I've used this literally for several years. Uh, you don't really need much of a a, a, a long hole uh, for your tongue uh, from your belt buckle to to ride in. And uh, I'll show you on this roller buckle. See that. Uh, that tongue's got to go through the belt somewhere, and that's what this this drive punch does. And uh, so we'll put that loop in there, and uh, and so we'll get started making a belt. Uh, a couple other things, I'm still using the CS Osborne dry punches, uh, the three sixteenths uh, dry punch. These are available. I got these this particular set. I got it at Maker's Leather Supply in Texas, and uh, this I use the three sixteenth size. Um, let me give you a good picture of that CS Osborne. Uh, drive punches and uh, I'm using the uh, the three sixteenths uh, size and this fits all my Chicago screws uh, fits the the belt buckle tongue uh, 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 for all that kind of stuff so I mean this is this is really good I, I enjoy using this one this is the one that fits uh, uh, all the all the stuff that I used it for and uh, always this is probably my most used tool in the shop is a scratch off and uh it's tempered leather or uh, tempered steel and and uh, i've drove holes through leather with it by hitting it with a hammer on the back of it and just driving it through leather like that and and uh make little marks on leather and and uh, when it's dark like this and an ink pen won't work or a pencil won't work this right here just a little scratch uh, just a little dot just to make a mark and and uh, that's what i use it for i mean it's great for prying great for working on anything and every leather supplier that i've ever dealt with sells these um i don't think well i don't think uh american leather direct has tools and stuff they've got uh leather uh but now springfield leather uh weaver leather supply uh makers leather supply um I mean, there's just tons and tons of places out there that are, these are available and Tandy leather. I mean, this, this, I don't even know. And this is a CS Osborne as well. I keep another one. I don't know if you can even see that CS Osborne, but I keep another one out in the shop, out in the garage, uh, when I'm working with my, with my stuff out there too. So I've got a couple of these, these are cheap. Uh, but literally five or six dollars, uh, and, and just probably the most used piece of equipment in my shop. So if you're just getting started and uh, you're looking for, uh, just a beginner set of leather tools, make sure you get one of these. And, uh, I mean, you can get them at Walmart. I've got one here. I got it at Walmart. It's got a whole lot sharper, uh, uh, point on it. I don't use it very much, but, uh, uh, but I do use it when I, sometimes when I'm ripping my stitching out of stuff. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, you can get them at Walmart. And, uh, so, but I, I keep this stuff around. All right. We're going to make, uh, and then my beeswax always wax my, my punches and just, I just punch it in there, just kind of dab it in there with my, my hand. And, uh, and that keeps my punches from sticking to the leather. All right. So the first thing I always do is I always knock off the end. Like I said, this is a round punch. And so this is where the buckle's going to go. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to knock that off. Hopefully all this banging around is not going to knock 
a camera over, but and so we've got a that's that's all that does is just knock that make that that round point like that. I've got another tool here. I got this from Tandy. It's another craft tool, and it's a it's a belt template. And I just and a lot of these companies have them. I know Aaron's got them at Maker's Leather Supply. Weaver Leather Supply sells them. Uh, I know that uh, Springfield Leather has them, and and uh, this is made out of acrylic, and it's got graduated lines on it. Let me hold it up on this thing here. You can see the lines, and that's for different size straps. And that inside piece, that that clear spot in the middle between those lines, is one inch. And so as it goes out, the the strap gets bigger. Uh, you can center your holes on that to, on on your strap. And that's what those guidelines are for, is to center. Uh, and on the end here, it's got a couple of different... Let me hold this up so you can see it a little better. And you see these arches right here. And so I always use this outside arch as the end of my belt. And then here... I was trying to see if you can maybe see it a little bit better. See, here's a hole and here's a hole. Here's for the slot that the buckle tongue goes through. And this folds around your buckle. And then here's a hole and here's a hole. And this is all for the Chicago screws to hold your buckle in place right here. So this part of it will fold over and those holes will match up eventually when we get ready to put the buckle on. And so I just mark, I just lay this down. I use that top, uh, uh, the outside arch as my end guide. And then I find the uh, lines that are for the, uh, and it keeps me straight and it keeps everything straight. I just follow that line, keep it all in the line and I just mark it. And then with my punch or my slot, I want to mark the center. I, I, this is how I do it. There's folks, I watch folks sometimes do theirs and they make the whole outline. Well, my slot punch isn't as long as this hole is. So I don't want to mark up the leather and I just make me a, a dot in the center and I just make, a dot in the center that shows me where I'm at in the center and then that line gives me a place to not go any higher because when I do this slot I just put that one I'll center it on my center and up dot and then put that top piece and it just cuts that little you see it there just a little slot right out of there and that's for the for the tongue of the buckle to go in. Watch me fumble fingers here. There's for a Chicago screw, and here's for the second Chicago screw. And these two. All right. And so that gets us ready for the buckle. Now, this end is, honestly, this end is finished. That's all we have to do to that end of it. And so, like I said, I was, I'm gonna make a 36 inch length belt. And at Fugue Country, we go by waist size on your pants. So if somebody says, well, I wear a 36 size pants, uh, I'm gonna show you exactly how uh, I do my size in here. And again, I just watched the video uh, that Weaver Leather Supply just put out, literally, I think in the last 24 hours. And uh, and and uh, they're, they're using a, a completely different way. And I like these, I've got this, I've got this four foot, 48 inch uh, straight edge uh, measuring device. And I just keep this here next to the desk. And my 38, I want my zero right here, right in the center where the buckle's going to be, where the buckle starts. And so when this folds over, just like that right there, that buckle's sticking off. So I want my zero right here. So I'm going to go out 36 inches from that spot. And so I'm going to put, if you'll notice, that that center hits, let me get it out here to where it's supposed to be. When I flush it to the end, well, you're looking at, when I flush it to the end, the center of that 
loop is at four inches. So it's just a fast way of me doing it. I just add four inches to it. So it's a 36 belt. So I'm gonna, I've got it flush with the end of the, the measuring stick and I'm gonna go out to 40 out here. I know that sounds confusing and it does get a little confusing sometimes, but I'm gonna make my mark right here and center of that hole, center of that loop, The center of that loop puts this mark right here at 36, right here at 36. So that's where we start. And so for somebody with a size 36 pants, this is going to fit. This is going to fit. I've been doing this a couple of years. I've still yet to have one come back that we use their pant size. I've had a bunch of them come back because they measured wrong. Uh, they, uh, tried to do it with a, uh, just a guess and, and, uh, well, I'll wear this size, but I think I need a bigger size. And then they've had to come back and, and, and because it didn't work. And, uh, and so what I do is that 36 is that first hole, just like on the, the belt end piece where the buckle goes, the strap end or the buckle, uh, the other end has those same lines on it, but it's got five different holes in it, just like that. And so I'll take my 36 point that I just marked, put it in the very last one, and then I'll mark all five of those. I use, and few country leather uses, eight holes. So we'll come out, and I always do this just because it keeps it straight. I'll do uh, the first five, then I'll do six and seven, and then I'll come out setting my three over the ones I've already marked and do number eight. And then that leaves me a hole. And then I go all the way out to the very end for the strap end or the belt end, if you want to call it that. And so that gives us a full, I don't even know. I don't even know how far it is. That gives us a full 11 and a half inches from the 36 out to the end of the belt. And so you've got that much. And usually what happens is by using pant size, usually what happens is, is the customer ends up wearing the belt either in the fourth hole or the third hole. And, uh, and that's the closest one to them. And so they'll end up with at least four or five holes out toward the end of the belt. And, uh, and that's what I want. I want them on the low end. At, uh, I'd rather have them on the low end or at least in the middle. I don't want to have anybody in the fifth hole, sixth hole, seventh hole. I don't want to have any belt going out of here that's going to hit somebody uh, on the fifth or sixth or seventh hole. That's just, you know, that's you're not going to get any kind of uh, use out of that if you're gaining weight. I mean, if you're losing weight, then that's one thing. But if you're gaining weight or your propensity is to gain weight like it is for me, <laughs> then you don't want to be on that upper end, the upper half of the of the belt uh, adjustment. And so now we've got it to where we've got it all marked. And I'll show you right there's where I made the, the end. That's where the, that little V right there is where I'll, I'll knock the end of the belt off. And you can see that I've got these little marks for all my holes. And I like to work vertically like this because I want to keep all of this stuff in line. I want to keep everything in line. So I'm going to use my, my punch, the uh, English point, and I'm going to put my English point on there. A couple of good strikes. And now we've got the rest of this. Now we're going to save this because this is what we're going to cut for our belt loop. And, uh, and we're going to use this. We'll have plenty enough for four or five other belt loops out of this, maybe even six or eight out of this, uh, this, this piece of leather that's, I don't know, almost two feet long. Could make a dog collar out of it. I mean, there's plenty of room here to make, make a pretty decent sized dog collar. Uh, so I keep all of these. Uh, some of my key rings, I can make some key rings out of that too. And, uh, and so there we have the cutoff belt there's the end point and here's the buckle end and so now that we've got that end cut 
I, I usually, since I've already got it in this position, I use these um, steel stamping tools. This is a, I just mark the size in it. I go all the way back here at the end. Watch me get my finger right here on video. <laughs> Stamps the three. Stamps the six. And there we have it. And that way I've got it marked. So I know exactly what size it is. When somebody calls and says, I need a 36, you know, I've got them, I've got them already ready. Now, when I'm doing the, uh, when I'm punching these holes, this is the reason I like it vertical. First of all, I like it vertical so I can punch, uh, get the end off of it. But the other reason, and the main reason, is because when I'm stamping or when I'm punching these holes out, I'm starting at the main back or the closest one. This is the 36 mark that we made. And I'm going to start right here, and I can eyeball it right into the center of that strap or in the center of the belt. And each one of these marks... I'm able to line them up. I had to look up to make sure I'm on video. <laughs> you need to see the belt. You don't need to see my face. And I'm just looking at it, making sure that I'm in the center. Put some more beeswax on the punch. At this little cutting board, I've done a run on them at Food City with these cutting boards. It's just happened to be the perfect size of stuff that I wanted, and and uh, and I've been stocking up on these. I've got four or five of these laying around. I keep them out in the garage and use them. I got a couple right here in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we got them. That's it. It's looking right. All right. So, and now we have, and you'd think, you know, right now it's a finished product. Well, it is. To the, for the most part, it's finished uh, as far as all the cutting and stuff. So we're done with all of that. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bevel the edges. When this was cut, it made, uh, when it was cut out, it made a, a 90 degree sharp edge on the tops and the bottom corners all the way down this belt. And I, same thing when I just did that. It kind of has a little bit of a roll to it uh, where I use those punches, uh, but uh, but uh, I still go ahead and bevel that off. I just, what I'm doing is I'm gonna cut that off. And I've got a, uh, we used the edge beveler in our, in our uh, video the other day about making the, uh, about making the rifle sling. I've got a, uh, a strop block. And uh, so I'm just, I want to use jeweler's rouge and, and strop that and get keep it sharp because I don't want to mess up my, my leather. And all this is, this is a uh, uh, horseshoe brand uh, available through Weaver Leather Supply. These are are uh, uh, exchangeable pieces uh, for different sizes uh, that makes it, it makes a different size cut uh, of knocking that corner off. And I'm using a number four. I think that's a number four. Oh, it's a number two. I'm using a number two. And uh, this is also, I mean, like I said, it's available at Weaver Leather Supply. And, um, And all I'm doing is just taking that, see, I'm just taking that edge off and just taking a little bit because all we want is that to be rounded over. We do the top and the bottom. They make a a, a pull through uh, edge beveler 
that uh, I haven't bought, but I am seriously eyeballing that for doing a lot more production of belts. And they make a uh, Weaver Leather Supply makes them. I mean, they, they're made in house. They they make their own tools. And uh, yeah, these these punches, these things are 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 made there at Weaver Leather Supply. And um, so we want to round this off. And all I'm doing is I'm just holding this kind of this angle and that handle fits right in the palm of my hand and I'm pushing it on that corner. And I'm holding it kind of at a kind of at a 45 degree angle off the leather and then a 45 degree angle over to the side. So I'm riding right on that right on that corner. And it's just as simple as that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, we'll uh, get some of uh, my workspace cleaned up a little. Now, the next thing with belt manufacture is taking care of that, that leather, uh, the edges. And I use... For my, all my belts, I use Martin's Mix Edge Edge Solution, and uh, I've been using this stuff for a little over a year now, and uh, this is the best edge stuff that I've ever found. And uh, these are a family-owned business in Texas, and uh, there's uh, they they sell it in different size bottles, and and um, and so uh, <clears throat> I've been using it for a long time. I, I really like it a lot. It's it's really good. It what happens is is that belt has it's kind of a rough texture to it. See the bottom of this leather's been pasted and uh, so it's got a smooth what we call a smooth back, but after it's been cut and beveled, then it has that rough texture that kind of comes back up on it. And so you'd want to have something that uh, that gets a little bit smooth. And so I use I just use a regular dauber. I don't do this for every belt. What I mean is, is I don't, uh, I don't use, and these are uh, uh, slicker sticks. You can get them, all these leather supply companies uh, sell them as well. Weaver Leather Supply and Tandy and Springfield and Makers Leather Supply. These folks I always do business with. Uh, Rocky Mountain Leather Supply, you know, they all these folks, and there's plenty more others. I mean, there, as, there's, probably 10 times as many suppliers as i've just named and um but what what it it's just a piece of like balsa wood or something and it's got these little rounded grooves cut into it and that's exactly what it's designed for is to smooth that leather down so you can tell a difference between this part of it where i've not touched yet and this part where it's starting to get a little bit of a shine to it and it's just smooth and that way it'll go through the belt loops, it'll feel good, and and uh, won't have any won't have any issues with it, and it protects the edges of the belt. I've I've said a minute ago I don't do this on all of them. I do it on all of every single strap that goes out of here, uh, but uh, my typically what I'll do is I'll. Uh, Typically what I'll do is I'll uh, use my drill press. I've got one, my brother-in-law made me one of these, uh, but it hooks up into my drill press. And so I do it out in the garage and this bulk of belts that I made this morning, that's where they'll all go. And uh, it's out to the drill press. But 
I wanted to do this on video just to show you that you don't have to have the big machinery. You don't have to have um, the uh, uh, the drill press. You don't have to have the bro law that makes you a little the edge slicker, you know, for your drill press. You don't have to have all that kind of stuff. You can just these are seriously four or five dollars, and uh, and and you can just I I used it on my wallets. I used it on my uh, all my belts, and so. It's just slicking that, those fibers of that leather down. And I'm waiting, waiting for it to get that shine to it. Sometimes I'll stitch a belt. And all my foundation belts, the Few Country Leather foundation belts get stitched. Uh, but not all belts from Few Country Leather get stitched. And uh, But sometimes I'll stitch these too. And typically what I'll do is uh, between the time that I cut the ends off and the, do the holes and stuff, from then uh, I'll go to the sewing machine and, uh, and then... Uh, I may, uh, sometimes I'll, the, I, the process can go either, either way. I can either go straight to the sewing machine then, or I can go ahead and cut the, the edges off with the edge beveler. At that point, uh, usually I'll go ahead and edge bevel, uh, like I've done. And before I do this part, uh, I'll go ahead to the sewing machine. This just gives you an idea of how fast it takes how long it takes to make one single belt here at Few Country Leather. And we, uh, if I did them all by hand, I was doing them by hand up until my brother-in-law made me that. And I'd asked him for that. And, and uh, we started selling a bunch of belts and I was getting where I needed some kind of something to help with the production. I've actually got two of these. I use uh, I use this one for, and they were both the same color when I started, but this one I use strictly on black leather and um, and blue. <laughs> I, I use that stri strictly for that, but for my all my browns and reds, I use this one right here. Just stuck some of that edge solution on my glasses. <laughs> See, even you can build a belt. <laughs> I'm like a big goofball sometimes. So you can buy these, all these companies sell belt blanks. And I mean, depending on your waist size, unless you're like a, a 50 or bigger, uh, even if you're a 50 or bigger, you can probably still end up being able to get a, a 72 inch belt blank uh, from somebody. And, uh, and build a belt big enough for, for you. And uh, usually, and I do have some, I've got some hanging back here that I've not cut off the end uh, for for the adjustment end. And I, they're hanging long uh, just in case I get somebody uh, that calls in and they need something that's, you know, 50 or bigger or uh, so. I mean, I can, I can make a belt to fit you. Uh, I don't care how big you are. Um, I'm a big guy myself. And I typically wear a 46 or 48 myself. And uh, so I, I always been mindful of the big guys uh, and, and trying to make sure I, I keep stuff on hand um, that uh, that I can fit you. And uh, so but I, when I make stuff up, I, I usually go, these I think I went to I, 42, this group that I just made this morning, 42 down to, I think I did a 34. I've got a couple of 36s and a couple of 38s uh, that I've done today. 
And uh, so I try to keep those things. Those are the most popular sizes. So I try to keep those. That's the sizes I keep made up all the time. Um, sometimes we'll sell them out. I've, I've uh, not sell out like out of stock, but uh, I mean, if I get a special run color, sometimes we'll, what what will happen is we'll we'll end up out of stock because we sold out. But um, sometimes I'll sell to. Uh, local stores um cory uh cory copley over here at southern prep Pipeville had uh has bought belts for me and has stocked belts a few country leather belts uh, in the past copperhead gun and range in Prestonsburg has uh has stocked belts in the past and and uh so i try to and i put their store logos on it so we do these um that's an availability if you're a if you're a brick and mortar and you'd like to stock uh leather goods we can get your logo and get a stamp made with your logo and put on belts or wallets or whatever that you'd like to wholesale from me and then sell at a retail price uh in your establishment so that's a that's another option i tell you it's on the subject of that we can also do and that's it for that this belt's finished and uh uh, another thing we can do is we can get your company logo and uh, and do a uh, we can do stuff uh, for your company and uh, do promotional items belts key rings uh, wallets uh, folding wallets we've got the little mountain minis uh, just a little card wallets and uh, so we make those and those are perfect for uh, for promotional items for your uh, for your employees we also got what I call the responder wallet, and it's a flat three pocket wallet. It doesn't open or anything, but it's got a, 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 a and I don't have one. I don't have one handy. I don't have one in here, but to uh, make a three pocket wallet, I've got them on the website. You can look at them on the website, and um, um, we can do those uh, for your company. Uh, with your logo on it and uh, we can do them in different colors too so we're going to make the uh uh we'll make the uh the loop to go on the end of the belt and uh I've, like i said my loops all of them five five eighths of an inch uh and so i just use where we just cut off the end of the belt and it just slides through that and it rides on this the straight edge on the side of that handle like that. And so we have a 5-8 strap. Just like we made the belt when the belt was an inch and a half. Same thing. Same uh, exact same um, process of making the belt we make the the loop so the first thing i want to do is i want to get me a flat edge on the front of it and then i want to double the belt over and i'm going to take my loop and i'm going to roll it around And I'm going to get it to where it's a good, comfortable fit on the back side. I'm just going to take my thumbnail and mark that. You can see if I can get it turned around here with my finger. I've got it overlapping, and I want to, I'm going to mark that right there where they overlap. Just use my, all I'm doing is using my thumbnail. And then I'm going to take that, and you can see how I marked it right there just right right in there and I'm gonna take my knife again and fairly straight <laughs> it's a skill need a new blade and so now we have now we have this is our loop and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the loop that I did with the belt and I'm going to take my edge beveler and I'm going to make the corn take the corners off. The 
just like that. I'm still using my edge solution. I'm doing the same thing. I mean, this we're doing exactly the same thing that we did when we made the belt. Uh, and so all I'm doing is taking that slicker and slicking those edges down and, and burnishing those fibers. Exactly the same thing I did to the belt. You hear how it starts to stick? That's when you know you're in the right, you're doing it right. It starts to dry up a little bit, it starts to get slick. And you can see the, how shiny that edge is. Then we flip it over and look at the other side and it's just rough. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I just, all I did was I just put that solution all the way down, the whole length of it. Alrighty, and that's it. So the loop's ready. I gotta punch it out. I'm glad you've uh, stuck around with us as long as you have on this video. I mean, we're looking at 40 minutes uh, in the video. Now I'm gonna use, this is a set of diamond chisels and I bought these, like it says on the box from Weaver Leather Supply. And uh, these are for hand stitching. Uh, I use them on my wallet sometimes if I'm hand stitching stuff. And uh, this particular set is the five millimeter diamond chisel set. And so all I'm gonna use out of this for now is uh, is the two prong one. These are great, I love these tools. Weaver does such a great job with their stuff. And, and I'm really happy to uh, to use their, thing, their, their stuff. I mean, so you've got a, a single punch and then a four prong punch and then a six prong punch. And uh, these are used for hand stitching and it puts your holes in. I've had people ask me, you run your needles through that leather? <laughs> well, yeah, but I have to punch the holes first. And uh, same way with this, we got to do that. All of the all the belt loops here at Feud Country Leather are done this exact same way. And so I'm just going to take that two prong punch. I'm going to place it down here just on the, almost on the very end. There's a, probably a, uh, not even hardly an eighth of an inch, maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch to the end. Using my, I don't want to hit that into the into the granite. Uh, just use this. That's why I use these. That's why I have so many of these. Is because you don't have to have worry about uh, your your end tools. And then all I'm doing is I'm putting those holes right in the end, just like that right there. Do the same thing on the other end, and that's it. That's it. We got, uh, we got a pair of holes in both ends. And um, I use Ritz of Tiger Thread, and this is the eight millimeter, uh, or point, uh, it's point eight of a millimeter. And uh, I always like using this beige with uh with my brown belts and um i've got black i use black too with my black belts but usually i mean unless somebody takes the buckle off uh people aren't going to see it um let me uh let me do this again if i can get it undone let me just do this let me show you how i did that i know this is belt making but we can do a these are harness needles, and this is a number number one, I think. Maybe a zero. I can't remember. But we just run that thread through there. And this is Ritz of Tiger Thread. And I usually buy and it's available at different places. Uh, but I usually buy it through Weaver Leather Supply. 
and I just run it through one time and then right up to the end of the needle. See it, I just took it through one time. And then I'll take it to the sharp point. I've got just a little, little piece up here at the sharp point and I'll pierce through the thread just like that. And then I'll bring it back down over top of itself. And then you can grab it down here with your other fingers, the other length of it. And it just pulls it up like a loop around that. And that way you don't have to tie a knot in it. And it makes it smaller profile about going through these holes. Now, I keep a little tray of odds and ends here next to my desk. And I use, these are the best things ever was, these little office clips. Um, and I use them for a lot of different things, but the main thing I use them for, usually all the time, I go ahead and bend the loop just like that. And that inch and a half belt is big enough. And the inch and a quarters are big enough too, that you can use those normal size clips just like that. And so I'll start on one side from underneath this is how all the loops at few country leather are done every single one of them that goes out of here and all I'm doing is connecting the two ends of that loop together I want to get it on the other side If you see this and you need some help, put a comment in there. Anything, of course, anything that I'm working on here today, uh, you can. You're welcome to put comments in, and uh, and I'll I'll get back to you. Try to address those. Go back and look at the the narration part of the comment section, and and uh, I'll have I'll go back. What I'm doing is I'm going back to the front side. I do three rotations on each set of holes. I do the first two and then I switch to the other side and come back and put, pick up that third one. And that way it puts my two pieces right there together. And then I'll just do a knot inside of that. And it's all, it's every bit inside the loop, just like that. Take the lighter, just burn the ends up. A little Walmart special, a couple of dollars. And there you have it, the belt loop for You can see on the inside, it's all, all the guts of it are on the inside and you got a real clean looking tie together on the outside to where those two ends are tied together. I've never had one come back. That rich of tiger thread is fantastic. I love using it. And um, let me see, I've got a belt buckle here. This is uh, usually, right now, it's here lately, it's through Christmas and stuff. Our most po popular style of this belt has been um, brass with uh, It's been brass uh, with the brown. And so, I mean, the belt's been done, the belt's finished, and uh, now we're ready uh, to put it all together. And I use Chicago screws. I talked about these in the in the other other video. Uh, these, these are solid brass, and you can tell they're brass colored too. I mean, I've got some that are nickel plated, but they're solid brass as well. Um, but uh, all, that's what I use is those, uh, they're solid brass. And I'll take, sometimes they'll come, they'll back off a little bit and I'll just take a little bit of Elmer's school glue, just normal 
hot glue and just put a little drop in there. I should have done that on video. Thought it was on video. And uh, I'll just put a little drop in there. And that way, if somebody wants to change the buckle off and, and uh, they can change it off, it's no issue about changing it. They can put it on with, uh, put on the, uh, their championship rodeo buckle or whatever. So, and, uh, and there's one. And then our, our loop just slides right down and it sits. You can see how that first one goes on the first, uh, Chicago screw. And then the loop goes between the two pieces of leather and sits between the two screws. And so then you put the second one in. And I always put the post side in first on the front side and then the screw itself goes in in the back. And that way you've got the flat looking um, head of the post out front and just a little couple of twists with a flathead screwdriver. And there you have it. You can see that I was talking about that inch long uh, groove and you got plenty of, plenty of up and down, plenty of movement space for the tongue of the buckle. I mean, it goes, I mean, completely vertical and completely uh, in both directions. And, and so you've got plenty of room. That one inch is a big enough. I mean, if you wanted to go to a bigger uh, slot punch than what I'm using, I mean, this is a one inch. And if you wanted to use something bigger than that, that's fine. Uh, just use what works for you. Uh, but uh, so here we have it. The only thing else that I would do and uh, what I will do on this one is I'll go out to the shop and uh, I've got a press out there and I'll put my few country logo right here just inside the buckle. Uh, and that way when the belt itself comes through, it covers it up, but it's in a great place and uh, it's a good spot for it. And, uh, and it makes for a really nice, this is, this is one of our most popular uh, belts right now. You can get these on the website under the chore belt. Uh, you may end up getting this very one if you are a 36 and uh, and you order in the next little bit. So uh, uh, you may very well get this very one. So, uh, but we're glad you tug, tag along with us and, uh, and watching on these videos. And uh, we've been right at 50 minutes, 52 minutes, 53 minutes now, uh, finishing making this belt and explaining the tools and the process. And, uh, and uh, we appreciate you tagging along with us and uh, on this little journey of leather uh, that we've got going here in Feud Country. Hey, we sure appreciate you. Thank you so much for being around. And uh, come back next time. I don't know what we're going to do yet for next time, but, uh, but we're going to do something. And, uh, and we'll be doing something really nice. So um, but we're glad you're here. And uh, if you got any questions, put them in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe to this video. And uh, we sure appreciate you. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. See you.